Three, two, one, zero. Hey. <laughs> Hello there. Okay. Oh, we're ahead of time. Um, yeah, we, we give people a minute to enter this stage. It's a little bit annoying that you have to get back every single time. Mm -hmm. so pop, pop, pop. People are dropping in. And um, we did gain a little bit of time, and but we just decided that we want to start nonetheless. So we're not running out of time at the end because it's really pretty tight schedule this slide. True. Yeah. Um, let me start by introducing the person we're seeing here. I mean, not myself, but the other person. <laughs> um, uh, welcome, Leon. Welcome back on stage. You have done other talks before, but this is a lightning talk. This means you have 10 minutes sharp. We're not yep. doing Q&A. In this case, so people out there in, in the audience, if you do have questions, please drop your questions in the queue and a nonetheless. Uh, yeah. And if possible, we can still squeeze the questions in. If not, uh, Lynn will surely be happy to answer things after the fact. Anytime. Um, yeah. So um, quick introduction. Leon has been a, a marketing automation specialist for couple of years now at Leuchtfeuer Digital Marketing here in Hanover, Germany. Um, oh. Also very active contributor in the Modic community, former team lead of the education team. And uh, yeah, double opt in. I think everybody in the audience will know what that is. And we're all curious to learn what is different in 2022. Leon, the stage is yours. Talk to you soon. Perfect. Then I will start presenting. Um, yeah, thanks for the nice introduction. There's not much I need to add to that, if I'm honest. So a bit about me, I'm Lian, 24 years of age, from Hanover. Been working with Mordek and Leuchtfeuer Digital Marketing since about 2018. Had various roles in the community. Eki already said that. If you have questions and I'm not able to answer them right away, drop me an email and I'll be happy to help. Today, I've brought to you two methods to do double opt-in in 2022. And I will start with the first method you might have already heard and seen. It's the double opt-in plugin. There is a pretty simple, straightforward double opt-in plugin. It's um, produced by Content Optimizer. It's open to use in GitHub. And um, it's pretty simple, straightforward. All it does is adding a new form action, as well as a little bit of short code you need to add to your double opt-in mail. And you're pretty much good to go. Two small things, but highly efficient. There's a small disclaimer. There is no official Mordic 4 support yet. This is a direct quote. The current version was tested with Mordic 3.3. Support for Mordic 4 is on the way. But it works with Mordic 4.3.1. I've tested it myself. But there's no official um, yeah, support yet. Maybe they will continue to support it. It's unknown at the moment. Without further ado, let's get into the form action. As I said, there are two things that's been added by the plugin. It's a form action, as you can see here. We will go over every step in a minute and a shortcut. This is basically what the first yeah, step is. You need to choose your double opt-in mail, which should be sent out. Pretty straightforward. You can choose tags that should be added or removed after a successful double opt-in directly from the form action, super handy. You can also choose segments, which the contact should be added or removed from directly in the form action. So you don't need to hassle around campaigns, filters, anything, just put it in the form action. Most importantly, the URL of your double opt-in landing page. So in fact, you need two things, your double opt-in mail and the double opt-in landing page URL. The rest is a nice to have. Those are the two things you need to have. As I already mentioned, also you're adding a short code. It's a little short code that you add to your dubbed up in mail instead of the link, because the short code will be replaced by the URL of the landing page, which you added in the form action. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And that's it. So. By adding those two, you have a pretty simple way of doing double opt-in in a matter of seconds. And um, the question is, but what if? But what if there's 
no more support for the plugin if the plugin doesn't work on Mordic 5 anymore. Those are things that are pretty realistic to happen, but don't worry. That's why I prepared a second method, which only uses vanilla Mordic. You need a small repertoire of components. This is basically the list. You need a developed in form for campaigns. You need a developed in campaign, a segment, mail, a URL, and one cron job. We will start out with the form, which is simple, like I said. It's contains just three components. It's email, first name, second name, or last name, and you don't even need a form action. That's all this form is for, and it's a type of campaign form, not a standalone one. Then we will talk about the campaign. We will talk about what it does pretty briefly before I show you the campaign. The campaign is based on the developed in form, which we created. It's supposed to send out our developed in mail. It checks for a landing page hit for our developed in URL landing page. And if needed, it sends out a reminder. That's basically all there is and all it's supposed to accomplish. Let's start. As you can see in the top orange box, there are first three steps. The first one is just our starting point, which is the double opt-in form. Then we send out our double opt-in mail, which contains a link to a landing page. And the third step is that contact visits the landing page. Um, now there are a couple of things we need to consider here. Problem one, what happens if a contact hasn't given cookie consent yet? So we aren't able to directly track him. Are we even able to track his page hit? Yes, we are. If you go to the settings and uh, tracking settings and enable identify visitor by tracking URL as shown here, you will reroute every link click from emails over the Mordic and it will be appearing in the, in the Mordic history um, as a page hit. So it doesn't actually matter if the contact actually gave cookie consent because the link click itself will appear in the contact history as a page hit. And we can use it in a campaign to check whether he visited that site or at least clicked the link, which for us is basically the same as um, we want to track here. There's a small disclaimer I need to give. This may lead to double page hits in the history because the one page hit is page hit is caused by the link click, which will be written as a page hit in the contact history. And the second one is just a normal tracking page hit. So there uh, is a high possibility that if cookie uh, consent was given, that there will be two of the same page hits in the contact history. And if the contact successfully um, yeah, visits the landing page, we add him to the developed and success segment. We give him a little timestamp. This is just a little extra we do. It's basically just a custom date and time field. And uh, it has the operator now. So if a contact passes through this action, the exact time and date will be written into the field. So we always have the time which he exactly or she exactly gave double opt in. It's not needed, but it's a nice feature that we have and then we remove them from the campaign. But what if uh, the contact doesn't directly visit the, the page? Then we wait two hours, send a reminder, and then again, we wait for the double opt-in page visit, and we give him one day, for 24 hours, to fulfill the page hit. If he doesn't, we just delete the contact, tabula rasa. Just we, we don't keep non uh, confirmed emails in our database, there's just no use for it. And just a small little thing I, I want to tell you about, there's been a timing issue. Since the dawn of time, there's always been a battle between use a standalone form to send your double up in mail immediately when the form has been filled out versus use a campaign form and then add the contact to the campaign. But we need to wait for the first step in the campaign that the email is sent out. So basically send out email directly, but we have no way of putting him into a campaign in the same step or add him to a campaign, but delay the email. And it's always not fulfilling. It's, it doesn't feel good. It's always, this has a bad side and that option also has a bad side. But don't worry, 
it's a solution. We, we, we do have a solution at the moment. Because if a contact fills out a campaign form, I got to admit, I didn't know this for, for a longer time. But if a contact fills out a campaign form, he will be instantly added to the campaign starting off the form immediately. The second, as you can see in the screenshot, he filled out the double opt-in form. He was also added to the double opt-in campaign. And this is perfect for us because all we need to do now is trigger the campaign, let's say once per minute, and the email will send out max 60 seconds after the contact filled out the form. And we do not have a big delay. And as I said, we need one cron job, which I just talked about. And we yeah, add a cron job, which triggers our double opt-in campaign once a minute. We have a singular cron job, a cron job in our cron job, which is more campaigns trigger. And then we put the ID of that campaign uh, behind it. There's an explanation in the uh, documentation how to do that exactly. And then we set the timing to once per minute. This means if a contact fills out our double opt-in form, he will be added to the campaign. He will receive a double opt-in mail in max 60 seconds. And we had the problem before that when we use a standalone form and the link click, because the email was sent out immediately, but the contact wasn't added to a campaign immediately, that the link click happens before the contact was even in the campaign, that it was lost and we couldn't use it and it wasn't readable for the campaign. We also do not have that problem anymore. So we have a pretty solid solution. We have a good timing, like 60 seconds after, max 60 seconds after the form was filled out is pretty, pretty good, I'd say. And um, all we need is one cron job for that and it works perfectly. And that was my lightning talk. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have a quick question, I think you can drop it. We still have a minute or two time. Um, if you have questions afterwards, feel free to drop me an email uh, or message me in Slack. I will be happy to answer your questions. Yeah, thank you, Leon. I think the one question that was obvious was, uh, uh, where is that GitHub, uh, that, that uh, plugin in GitHub? Yeah. And uh, it was on the screen briefly. Let me share it again here. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So if you Google for Mordic DOI in GitHub, that will bring it already. Um, yeah. Other than that, thank you very much for the insights. Um, not sure whether 2023 is going to be bringing, <laughs> going to bring a new version of Double Up in, but we'll it's not see. Going, going to go away, I'm sure. Um, okay, we're well on time. Uh, we have five minutes to go before the next lightning talk begins. Um, if nobody in the audience has questions, then I guess I will let you go and we I'm will wait, wait for Madeleine, who will talk about a multi channel marketing use case for Mordic in a hotel environment, which, which is a, quite a different type of lightning talk. Okay, for yeah. now, Leon, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Okay, and I see you soon. Bye bye.